As Chris said, I'm an interaction designer, so it means I spend my day thinking about digital technology and how we can make that more meaningful in our daily life. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of uh, um, um, digital devices that have been designed for the purpose of all the, our sentimental digital belongings. And we are going to talk about technology, but the starting point is not the, the last uh, device, the newest uh, cool digital thing is actually for me is the home. For designers it's very important to understand the context they are designing for and for me it's the home, the people who live in there and the values they have. Um, all of these then I designed the technology around those values and around those people. And I spent quite a bit of the last five years trying to understand the relation between people and their own personal memories and how objects mediate um, this relationship between people and objects. I've, uh, my focus is the family, family home, so the, the house itself, but also special occasions like family holidays and Christmas. And you can say that I've been nosy, and been very nosy indeed, um, but this was very uh, important for me to try to understand what people keep as objects of memory the relationship and what they do, how they build this uh, meaningful relation with those, those objects. This picture is about 10% of the data that I've collected in uh, 70 uh, homes in Sheffield. The participants were kind enough to walk with me in their houses and show me objects of memory and talk to me about their stories. And so you can see there is a bit of everything in there. Uh, I just point out these, these two little jars are the ashes of the deceased father together with the medicine that the father, a doctor, didn't take so he died. So I've seen a little bit of everything. And objects can be created as memento to start with, like these pregnancy casts, or they can become mementos because of just time has passed. So in this case, 40 years. And so looking back at the school, uh, school books was very emotional for the person. The last example I have is this uh, uh, mug that is actually broken. Um, uh, but the lady, despite the fact that she cannot use it anymore, she cannot bear to throw it away, she feels really emotionally attached to it. Uh, it's a memory of living in London and uh, for a certain period of her life. So it's something that she lived with for a long time. So it's a form of autobiographical object. It's an object of continuity and she had it for 20 years. Whatever is the way objects become mementos, okay, um, they have a space, a specific place in our life. In the case, for example, of the pregnancy cast, even though that was inspired by the piece of art, it's not in the front room, it's in the uh, lady's bedroom. Some other objects are um, in cupboard. In this case, this beautiful metal vase is on the mantelpiece on the front room. So it's a form of reminder, continuous reminder of uh, the memento. But the memento is not the vase itself, it was the inside. Inside, there are all the objects, that the, the first objects of the child of the family, who is now 15. As you can see, the lady doesn't look into the, the jar very often. Actually, she couldn't remember what was inside there. And so the emotion she feels when rediscovering, reopening the, uh, the metal vase is very high. So it doesn't matter how often you go uh, and look at your stuff. Uh, it's important the connection we have, to, you have with them. Digital objects have the same affective property for people. Uh, I've seen uh, people who uh, had answer messages on the answering machine, they wouldn't delete. This is another example, it's a, it's a map of travel. But they are in computers, so in a very anonymous places. This is, this is one of mine, digital memento. And it is, it's a, this is a chat conversation with my daughter when she was five. I was at work and she was at home. And for me, it's very, uh, very emotional, very effective. But it is a file in my computer together with my work stuff, some digital receipts and so on. So it accumulates there and uh, creates, in a sense, some form of digital clutter that we don't go through and see and decide what we want to keep. When we have too much stuff, we just buy a larger hard drive, back up everything, and just for put it in a safe place and just forget that we have it. 
This is not what we do with, uh, with material things. If we have too much, it's not that we buy a larger house and we move in with all our stuff. We rent a skip and we decide what we want to keep and what we want to throw away. So it's this process of uh, deciding, selecting, and keeping and throwing that makes uh, certain objects particularly meaningful in our life. Um, maybe it's only me who feel affection for uh, a file, um, so I decided to ask people, 10 families in Sheffield, to make time capsules to open in 25 years' time to see which type of material and digital objects they would keep for the future, for themselves for the future. Again, a lot of interesting and curious uh, objects, materials of every sort. This is probably 5% of the data that I had. But when looking at the type of digital, it, this is what I got or this one. And the content was very meaningful, very effective. A website that uh, the person was curating, digital content uh, like uh, singing or playing together, things that have been created for the time capsule, photographs, really all sorts, artworks done with Photoshop, but the container were really, really anonymous. So for me, as an interaction designer, there was an interesting question here. Can we do any better? Is that the best we can do for something that we feel attached, but it looks uh, awful? Um, what about sound? You know, memories very often are associated with the idea of pictures. What about sound? When you go on holiday, instead of uh, taking pictures, taking sounds, so what about sonic souvenirs? So again, I asked 10 families going on holiday to record their, their sounds as a, um, as a memento of that. Holiday. And then was the challenge, how do you play it? Do you put it on your computer and you play just clicking uh, on, a, on an application or your mobile player? Uh, we thought, what about a radio, what we call the family memory radio, um, that you can, you like to have around you, your house, you can keep exactly as a metal vase around you. But when you play it, when you click on it, that's the effect. So the starting point is a, uh, an old uh, Roberts radio from the 70s that we bought uh, through eBay. eBay then we um, took it apart, tried to keep as much as possible the original uh, components, selected uh, uh, some digital components, put the two together, digital and uh, physical, uh, to, to create uh, the interaction uh, devices, assembled then in the, on, the, on the top of the screen and put everything together inside, back inside the, uh, the radio. That's for the hardware point of view. Then the, for the software, we collected all the sounds and organized them in different uh, uh, folders. Every folder corresponds to a channel that can be selected, you've seen in the video, by clicking the different uh, uh, buttons there. 
And you can browse through the, the different sounds with the tuning going backward and forward. What is in very important is the form. Uh, one thing, the form allows us to, to create a relationship with the, the object, with the sounds inside, as is very different from playing things on, on a computer. The physicality of clicking on selecting, the possibility of taking that just out of the shelf and having it on the table when we have a, a friends or family around is very important. As you can see in the video, the video was um, recorded at the people, one of these, the family who participated in the Sonic Souvenir study uh, during a session when I just said, well, this is what we've done, try it for us and see what you, you feel about it. Well, we must have been lucky uh, to find something that was so effective to, uh, to create, but maybe this is instead something to, we can do again. So for us, a design, interaction designer was, uh, was interesting to see. That was just a lucky chance or something different. So next step, okay, what, what about family Christmas? Let's see again what people do at Christmas time. So again, I heard a lot of stories about preparations for Christmas, buying presents, uh, decorating the house, and so on. There are some specific... Um, idiosyncratic, every family doing certain tradition in their own way. But there was a lot of, uh, of food preparing, eating together as a group. There was a bit of uh, uh, activities to burn out the calories after Christmas, a lot of laziness, a lot of playing together as family. There was some interesting surprises and there was no technology at all. Technology is strictly for forbidden, even the mobile phone is not cannot be there at that time. So again, for us, it was a very interesting challenge. Can we make digital devices that can be used in a situation like Christmas, where people don't want to have technology, and used not because they are there, they, you're forced to use it, but because there is a pleasure in, in manipulating and having them around you. So what about digital bubbles, memory bubbles, where you can store your personal content. In this case, this is a, a picture, uh, a, a, an image bubble. So the, the, there is a, a small digital photo frame inside, and you can look at, the, at your pic picture through the, um, the viewfinder. And you can store the bubble together with your decoration in January and take them back at Christmas time, so re-see what you have. Um, done the previous year. Another example is the sound bubble. You can record snippet on sound at your Christmas day and then revisit them by clicking the, on the carrot nose. Another example is, uh, uh, is this one, um, where the bubble can build up the time to Christmas, count on glowing progressively until it is the time to show you its content. Only once a year on Christmas time, only once, once a year, every year. As before, as for the radio, inside there is some digital technology providing functionalities, but the case, the object that you have in your hands is very different, and the feeling, the engagement with your content, again, is very different. So we went back to the families who took part in the, in the Christmas study and asked them their perception, their feeling about this type of, uh, of objects. And there was a, an interesting discussion about the appropriation of those objects, not at the technology that was within, but the, the content, the really personal content, seeing these objects as becoming part of the Christmas celebration, a way of celebrating the family, of recording the passing time, and recording 20, 30, 40 years of the family in that way. So to conclude, I think there is a lot of possibility for combining digital and material um, world, creating objects that have in their own um, a, a different form of, from what we are used in terms of the digital devices. So the content is very rich, and they have a presence in our house in terms of aesthetics, but also in terms of playfulness. They are not there for work. They are done for specific and niche goals. And uh, um, the way I envisage these, uh, this future is that you would create objects that you would like, not because they have been designed in California, but because you have done them in your kitchen, on your kitchen table, and you can use it with your family, with your friends in a very different way. 
And my very last word is a thank to my um, past and present colleagues because I didn't do all of these alone. Thank you for you for listening.